Hejsan och välkomna till dagens visning av Beamtree Manager. Jag heter Roger Bens och jobbar på ASC som försäljare och rådgivare. Är det någon av er som inte hör eller ser så vill jag att ni skriver i rutan eller trycker på den här handen så man kan visa att man inte är riktigt okej. Okay. Jag ser inget att jag tycker vi kör igång. Jag heter som sagt Roger Bens och jobbar på ASE. Vi kommer idag köra en webbinar om Beamtree Manager. Dyker upp frågor eller några funderingar så har ni min mailadress i rutan. Ni kan skriva upp den eller kan ni skriva frågorna i den här lilla question-rutan under visningens gång. Först några ord om ASE som är ett företag som håller på med CAD och allt som är där kring relaterat. Vi startade 1986 så är cirka 40 man anställda. Eller 40 personer ska jag säga, inte man. Vi finns på fem kontor i Sverige. Vi är goldpartna till Autodesk, HP, AgaCAD och silverpartner till Bluebeam. De här partnerskapen innebär att vi har utbildat personal såväl på försäljning och teknikersidan. Utöver att sälja andras produkter har vi givetvis egna produkter. Vi har AC Plus som är en branschanpassning till Autodesk CAD-programvara. AutoCAD Architecture och Revit. Vi har något som heter Cadium som är en skripthanterare för DVG-filer. Där du kan göra det mesta med filen genom att skripta på något vis, ändra ändringar i stämplen, ändra vad ni vill, skriva pdf för och göra detta automatiskt och slippa ta upp och ta ner alla ritningar igen och igen. AS är givetvis också en tjänsteportfölj som anpassar och paketerar efter marknadens önskemål och vi är angelägna att erbjuda en stark kompetens som infrier högt ställda förväntningar från våra kunder. Detta om AC och vad vi kan hjälpa er med. Dagens produkt som vi kommer att köra en visning om heter ju Beam Tree Manager. Den låter dig löpande kontrollera kvalitetssäkra projekt, densintegration, analyser och fysiska modeller. Du kan lokalisera och isolera objekt i öppna eller länkade modeller. Kontrollera geometrier och data i olika detaljnivåer samt komplettera information eller korrigera felaktigheter. Ni hittar, isolerar, verifierar enkelt data och geometri. Kontrollerar att aktuella standarder följs. Förbättrar samarbetet inom BIM-teamet. Ni sparar tid genom att applicera rätt. Level of detailing. Ni upptäcker fel i god tid för att minimera avbrott i projekteringen. Och BIM Tree Manager är en avancerad lösning för kvalitetskontroll inom BIM-projekteringen. Men... Det dynamiska gränssnittet gör att det är lätt att hitta och hantera objekten i realtid. En snabb sammanfattning. Nu kommer jag lämna ord och bild till Renata som är produktspecialist och kommer köra visning och demo för er. Så nu lämnar vi bild och över till Renata och kör på. Hello Renata, your time to do the show. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, so a little bit um, about um, AGA CAD. Um, uh, we do solutions for beam execution and LOD quality control. And our previous brand was Tools for Revit. Uh, AGA CAD is professional developer of beam software and add-ons that are compatible with Autodesk Revit and we are Autodesk authorized developers. Uh, we are um, gold partners for 25 years of Autodesk and we have the oldest Autodesk uh, training centers in the Europe. Um, at the moment we sold more than 8,500 commercial licenses in uh, more than 129 countries. 
Um, the most important value of our team is customer alignment. We strive to respond to the needs of every uh, client and uh, reducing uh, BIM stress, uh, this is our promise uh, to the customers. Uh, here you can find uh, uh, the chart of uh, all products that we have right now in the market. Uh, so there are many solutions for different um, uh, disciplines. So like here in the top we have four solutions for MIP engineering. We have um, a tool that goes for uh, working with uh, fire protection systems. So it's under the name Smart Sprinklers. Then we have for working with ventilation systems. So we have uh, smart diffusers. Uh, then we have cut opening that's very powerful for making openings around uh, ducts, pipes, cable traces and conduits in the walls, floors, ceilings, beams and columns. Uh, then we have tools for Revit uh, add-ons. So here you can find different solutions uh, for documentation and for modeling. For example, for adding dimensions automatically, for making sheets automatically, for inserting additional objects into, into your Revit project. Then we have smart assemblies. Uh, it's very good for preparing shop drawings automatically. Mostly it goes for prefabricated elements. Then we have metal framing. Uh, here you can find uh, solutions for framing your walls automatically, uh, for framing the floor panels, uh, for working with the trusses, uh, and for framing um, your roof using the rafter system. And um, uh, with all those solutions, you can uh, make a model, you can frame uh, your objects, but at the same time, uh, you can prepare shop drawings automatically. Uh, the same we have for the wood, uh, for the wood framing. Um, there are the same solutions uh, for framing the walls, floors, uh, trusses, for building trusses automatically and for generating crafter systems. But here uh, the, the software use uh, wooden framings. Uh, then we have Smart Browser Group. Here you can find uh, four solutions for working with your content, uh, for working with your families that comes from the library uh, and for managing uh, the families. Then we have two solutions under the sustainable design group. And uh, uh, today uh, we are going to talk about BIM Tree uh, Manager. So this is really powerful solution for uh, ongoing uh, uh, quality checks uh, to boost BIM team interaction, uh, improve analysis and get the right physical results. Uh, it's really simple to select rele relevant elements in the current or linked uh, projects, uh, verify geometry um, and add the data to any LOD. Uh, just first, I would like to talk a little bit about LOD, about level of development. Uh, I believe you know um, uh, and you know it, and uh, just I want to um, uh, to show it again and to talk a little bit that uh, it divides into level of detail and level of information. So in general, level of detail it it is how the uh, family looks like in the project and level information what additional parameters and what additional information uh, the family has in the project. Um, then uh, if we take a look here uh, this is like an example of level of detail uh, so in general there are five the most popular uh, level of details so like level of detail 100 200 300 and as you can see with every um, step with every stage we are adding more and more details into the uh, into the project and in this in the final stage uh, the model will look like as, as it should be built. Uh, then we have level of information and um, with the level of information there are in this case there are seven uh, stages of level of information and let's say in the first uh, stage we just need to have the ID codes uh, width and height and the area and then with the, with the next uh, stages we're adding more and more information about the material, about the U value, about the fire rating uh, and, and so on. Uh, so the level of information is very important because uh, um, here uh, this information could be, uh, I mean the project could be checked according to this information and uh, this information later should be delivered uh, uh, to other uh, uh, BIM uh, 
uh, BIM parts. Uh, one more example with the level of information and here as you can see again uh, we're adding more and more detail details and information to um, uh, to the to the families to the elements or to the objects in in the Revit project and then also we're adding uh, more and more um, detailings uh, into them into the column um, this could be one example with the windows. For example, if we have here um, um, five main stages, uh, we can add more and more information like a level of detail. Uh, so we can add, uh, we can, um, in the third stage, we have, uh, we can have LOE uh, three. Um, and uh, let's say if we take a look into level of the detail, uh, level of the detail could stay uh, the same in, uh, in some stages. So for example, in the first two stages, uh, level of detail could stay the same and just in, in level uh, in the third stage, uh, we will change the graphical presentment of the window. Um, and one more example with the door category. Uh, here uh, we are adding more and more information to the to the door, but uh, uh, the detailing and the graphical design of the of the door could stay the same uh, till the end of your uh, BIM model. So in general, it depends on the uh, on the purpose of the building and uh, it depends on the workflow of the project. Uh, but still, this could be different scenarios. Um, so. BIM Tree Manager, uh, it um, uh, takes uh, the standards and guides reflected to... Uh, this is a list of standards and guides that are reflected to the solution. And uh, in general, BIM Tree Manager organizers, organizes uh, project information in, in the tree layout. And it's very easy to navigate, expand and collapse the tree with the uh, Revit BIM data. Um, and it shows parameters and its values of all Revit elements in the separate rows. And it's easy to filter the elements you want to analyze. And it's very easy to create new shared parameters or manage parameter values automatically. Okay. So now I would like to uh, switch to my Revit project. Uh, this is the hotel uh, that um, um, yeah, so this is the hotel uh, with um, three uh, using three levels. Uh, so first, that what I would like to do is, um, as you can see, we would like to check if everything is okay with this model. And uh, BIM Tree Manager, you can find in the separate uh, tools for BIM Doc. Uh, this is um, our created uh, separate uh, um, uh, docking functionality for management, uh, for managing different solutions and different tools. And here in the store, you can very easily find BIM Tree Manager and you can very easily install this product. Also, um, this doc will show you the updates if they are, they are coming and you, you will be able to know that you have always the latest installation. Uh, also, under the My Tools, you will be able to see if you have a subscription or uh, if you are using the trial versions of, of the solutions and you will have all information about um, uh, the latest news and updates. And in the Tools tab, you will be able to use the tool uh, you want to, to use in the project. So the main functionality is just BIM Tree Manager. And the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to check um, uh, the curtain walls. You know that in the early design stage, architects, they love to use uh, curtain walls instead of, um, instead of windows in the early design stage. So here uh, you can very easily um, change those curtain walls. Just let's select those two curtain walls. So in the early design stage, we can very easily replace those curtain walls with the real windows from the project. As you can see, the tool shows every element in the separate row as it is here. You can very easily filter and see the element you are selecting. And uh, after selecting them, uh, there are many functionalities what you can do with those curtain panels. 
uh, you can add additional information you can write um, you can add uh, the real elevation or you can add coordinates you can remember those curtain walls but at the same time uh, you can replace it with a real window uh, here you can just choose any family from the project any window family from the project and after pressing OK, now the tool will change those curtain walls with the real windows. So the tool will create uh, the new type name for you automatically. Uh, so in such case, uh, we can very easily replace the elements and we, we can be sure that uh, our model uh, fits the BIM standards. And uh, uh, right now we have the real windows uh, now let's take a look into the door category and in such case in my project I have many doors let's take a look into this um, uh, model we can very easily filter all doors from this project um, and we can see the results actually the level family type and the mark parameters they are the default parameters uh, that comes automatically uh, but you can anytime you can change that also uh, the tool shows you uh, those families in the tree layout so you can very easily filter only the doors from the first level uh, or you can filter them according to the family uh, name or the family type for example uh, so you can very easily select uh, those elements and after selection you will be able to see them in the model now um, also we can very easily see the uh, values and the differences between the elements um, as we can check uh, the mark mark value uh, the the marks are not so very good uh, some elements they have marks and, and some of them they are, do not have them so in general we can very easily remember those doors automatically and fill mark values for all 247 doors from this project uh, here we have very powerful functionality sort mark that automatically uh, renumbers elements according to your rule so you can predefine your own rule for numbering your doors and it doesn't matter actually what kind of standard you use for numbering your doors in your company or in your country um, you can just select your own configuration and after pressing ok now the tool will renumber those doors automatically and now uh, the door number will have the uh, room number where the door opens so if we take take a look back to the plan view right now the door will will have automatically the room number where the door opens and then the running uh, letter of the door now uh, let's uh, add more parameters and let's check what else we can do um, as you can see I will come back uh, in my previous slide uh, let's take a look into the level of information as you can see uh, in the first um, stage of level of information we need to have the width and height the area and the code so it's very easy to do that uh, we can just um, uh, go to configuration and we can very easily add the ID uh, of the doors at the same time we can very easily calculate the area um, uh, you can choose any your own created uh, area parameter uh, from the project uh, uh, or you can just uh, create uh, uh, the door area uh, parameter here just directly uh, with the software and now the tool will calculate automatically the area for all uh, the doors that are created in this project and this parameter will be shared so now I will be sure that um, um, I will be able to use this parameter in the tags if it's necessary and in the schedules okay and that's it now we have the door area that is automatically calculated for all the doors and now uh, with this stage in in this case we can say uh, we can save that configuration and we can say that those parameters they should fit um, LOD 200 
Uh, now, uh, with the next stages, we can add more and more parameters and information to our doors. Let's say we would like to write the swing direction automatically. So again, I'm going to create a new parameter like swing direction. Where you can add initials uh, for the left, left side and for the right side doors and the tool automatically will create this parameter. Uh, then let's, uh, mm, let's write orientation. So again, I'm going to create a new parameter, orientation. Okay. Uh, also, if you want to get more precise orientation value, uh, you can just include um, the angle. Okay, so again, it will be recalculated. Then uh, we can write the real elevation values. Uh, let's say we would like to have the real uh, bottom uh, sheared elevation. So it will be um, bottom uh, sheared elevation parameter. Okay, and we have the real um, bottom shared elevation parameters. And we're working with a dialogue. With this dialogue, we can see those uh, families in the project, but at the same time, we get uh, all this information automatically. So uh, there is no need to close BIM3 dialogue. You can just work with it and you will be able to see the changes uh, immediately. And now we can check the parameters and we can see that all those values, uh, they're replaced. Now uh, let's uh, add uh, more information like uh, uh, door material, and then let's add uh, fire rating, uh, then let's add, uh, let's say, manufacturer parameter, and now we can filter uh, the doors. Also, if you want, you can add um, uh, more information about the doors, for example, like, like the room name or the room number uh, where the door opens. So now you will be able to filter your doors according to the room name where exactly the door opens. So now we have filtered all uh, uh, doors that opens to the standard rooms in the first level. Now let's uh, change and let's filter some uh, families and types. At the moment I have filtered 15 uh, doors from this project. And now let's change the values. Um, after filtering those elements, we can very easily uh, select the column and we can add, for example, the fire rating for those doors. Um, at the same time, I'm going to uh, add um, a manufacturer value or uh, let's change uh, door material. Uh, so this is a material parameter, so I can choose any material um, from this project and now the tool will automatically change those materials. So now, after getting and after adding this information to our doors, we can see that uh, the detail is not so very good. I mean, the family, it's not so very, it doesn't look like and nice and uh, uh, we would like to change and, uh, and we would like to replace it to the higher level of detail. So in order to replace those into the higher of detail, we would like to keep those parameters, we would like to keep them but at the same time, we would like to replace them to the higher, um, to the higher um, LOD. Uh, so now uh, we have parameter, we have the functionality replace elements with mapping, and here you can choose any other family that is with the higher information and with a higher higher uh, level of detail. And after selecting uh, this family, we can choose parameters that, that we want to transfer. For example, I would like to transfer the fire rating from my old family to the new family, then the tour material, and then, for example, manufacturer that we just added. And as you can see, the tool shows the parameters um, from my old family and from my new family, and the tool automatically will map those parameters. So I'm saying that the fire rating will go to the fire rating, manufacturer will go to the manufacturer, but the door material is red because the new family doesn't have such parameter like door material. So you can map it with any other parameter. Let's say I'm going to choose frame parameter from my new uh, door family. And now after switching OK, now the tool will replace uh, those doors. It will keep the sizes and it will keep 
the parameters that we wanted to, to have. And now we can see that I'm going to check the type parameters. We can see that uh, the hello color was transferred to the frame parameter and at the same time uh, manufacturer values transferred and the fire rating. So now we can sure uh, we're we are sure that we have switched to the higher uh, level of uh, development. So after having those parameters and after getting uh, those parameters and parameter values, we can save again. We can save it under the LOD four hundred, and now uh, we will be able to every time to check and to switch between uh, different LODs. Um, one more functionality that you can use with the BIM tree uh, is very powerful because you can insert additional elements into your project automatically. Um, again, uh, let's filter, um, let's say, a single panel doors that opens to, um, uh, to, to the standard rooms from the first level. And now uh, there is functionality that inserts elements by related objects. It's very powerful because you can insert um, elements according to different rules. Uh, let's say I'm going to select um, electrical switch and this switch will be automatically inserted at the door handle side. And here you can add elevation and side offset from the door. So after insert a model, now the tool added automatically 30 um, electrical switches and now we can check them here. Okay, and uh, again, if we take a look uh, into the plan view, uh, we can see those electrical switches here. The same if we have rooms and if we want to switch to an another category, and actually it doesn't matter uh, what kind of category you use. So um, I did right now exa some examples with my uh, doors, but the same I can do with the rooms. Um, the same I, I have the rooms and now I can filter it, filter all standard rooms from the first level. Or I would like to change um, the number of my rooms. Again, I can go to the sort mark and we can very easily fill we can very easily add the rules how the, how the numbers should be automatically generated and after adding the rules the tool automatically will remember uh, those uh, rooms according to the uh, level uh, okay or according to the x direction or y direction it doesn't matter actually what kind of rules you you would like to have and now uh, we can see that those rooms automatically remember it even then we can um, uh, we can filter just the element uh, from the project and then uh, the room from the project and then also we can insert um, let's say um, a plinth uh, at the moment I'm go I have selected the room the room object and this is my line based element uh, and here I have the rule that this line-based element will be automatically added according to perimeter of my room. If it's, if it's necessary, you can add the elevation or side offset from the opening, from the door or from the window. And then, again, after inserting to the model, the tool automatically added 15 um, uh, plinth segments and we can see this, uh, we can see this plinth here in the plan view. Uh, or we can just switch back to our 3D view. Uh, then we can insert um, more objects into the rooms. So, uh, we can, in the same case, in the same scenario, we can insert um, uh, furniture uh, or we can insert, uh, let's say, lighting fixtures. Let's insert, for example, this lamp. This is ceiling based element from my project. Actually, you can select any your own created family. Uh, the tool here shows all families that are loaded into your current project. So this is a ceiling based uh, family. And now the tool shows you a rule that this element will be automatically placed to the room location point. And after pressing insert to model, there are 15 elements inserted and we can see those um, lamps here. In the same case, in the same way, you can insert 
furniture or any other equipments uh, to your rooms. So especially it's very handy for working with the big projects and now you will be always sure that will, you will not make a mistake. Um, the families uh, that should be inserted into specific uh, rooms will be automatically inserted. So this is one example um, with the rooms, but the same you can do with any structural with a structural model. If we have, let's say, columns so in this project, uh, we can come back again to our BIM Tree Manager, and now we are working with the columns. Again, you can choose any kind of your own parameters. You can check those parameters. You can remember them. You can um, add additional. For example, maybe X and Y coordinates to the columns. It could be shared or project coordinates. Okay, so again, let's create X and Y uh, parameter, shared parameter to the column. Again, we can see that parameter that is automatically added to the properties of every column. And now we can insert um, additional objects. Um, let's go to insert elements and uh, let's filter connections. I'm saying that this connection will be added to the top face of my column and uh, uh, let's say for example such connection should be added into the bottom face of the column. As you can see in one in with one click I can distribute two uh, types of um, different connections and actually there are again this is sample our created paper connections they are phase based connections but again you can use your own families and there are different rules uh, you can put the family to the top face to the bottom face or to the column and beam connection and now after inserting to model now the tool will distribute those connections to the top face and to the bottom face of the columns and also the tool will actually the connection size will be automatically adjusted to the column size because we're transferring parameter values from the host family to the family that is inserted and there are 310 elements automatically distributed you can just imagine if you would try to do that manually. So as you can see, this connection is automatically added to the bottom face of my column and the sizes that are automatically adjusted because as you can see, uh, H and B parameter values, they are the same as the column sizes. And uh, also here we have added automatically um, um, PICO connection to the top face of the column. Uh, the same scenario with beams, uh, if we take a look again to the beam tree manager and uh, if we have um, different beams in the project, uh, let's filter maybe some family from this project uh, and uh, let's go to insert elements by related objects and here let's add um, uh, for example such type of connection um, as you can see, you can make array, um, even you can make an array uh, and distribute uh, different uh, uh, stiffener plates uh, uh, on your beam. Um, but here I'm going to use uh, the rule that will place uh, those phase-based objects uh, on the start and end faces of my beams. Okay, and there are 152 elements automatically distributed and we can see uh, them here. Now, um, now let's come back again to my architectural 3D model and just one more example that I want to show. Um, again, I will do that maybe with a window category, but the same, uh, it will work for all categories. Um, uh, we have added possibility to rename types automatically. Uh, here I have windows in this project and some usually, as you can see, the window uh, or any other category types type names, they are not so very nice. Uh, some uh, users, they are using their own um, uh, type naming um, and others users another rule of the type naming. So sometimes if you 
want to make it common uh, for the whole project um, usually with Revit you have to do that manually one by one uh, here uh, we added functionality rename type name by configuration and you can add your own rule uh, how the type name should look like so in such case I'm going to use width and height parameters uh, here I'm going to add the surface and then um, millimeter surface after the height parameter so in my case my type name will contain uh, the real width and height um, uh, values from the from the from the type parameter and that's it the tool automatically will rename those type names for you okay and after selecting the family we can see a really nice looking uh, type name the same you can do with any other object uh, like column. You can add your own parameters that should be gener should, that should be used in generating the type name for the column. It could be sizes, it could be length, it could be um, manufacturer or any other information. Okay, so. Um, uh, with BIM 3 Manager, um, uh, with this tool you can save your time in checking parameters and with checking parameter values, so with adding more information to the families uh, in the, that are used in the project. Uh, for checking the uh, quality of your model uh, and then for uh, switching them um, LOD for, from one level to uh, another. And um, promoting the BIM industry, this is uh, our, uh, this is our uh, promise uh, to our customers. Uh, one more the last slide uh, we would like I would like to say is that you are welcome to join our community and um, if you have any um, ideas or if you have any requests concerning uh, the, the products or concerning the Revit itself uh, you're welcome to contact us and let us know about um, uh, about uh, the things or the areas you want uh, to improve or the things where you want to save your time. So that's it that I wanted to show you today. Uh, if you have any questions, you are welcome to add your questions into the questions dialog and uh, I will try to uh, answer them. <coughs> Ni får gärna skicka frågorna till mig också på min mailadress som ni såg på första sidan. Robz.ac.se Annars så vill vi tacka för ert deltagande och som sagt så hör gärna av er för några frågor på BN3 Manager eller på någon annan av våra produkter eller tjänster vi kan erbjuda. Så tack så mycket för idag.